whole time, the whole thing was shadowing us, right behind us, right on the side of us. You could, you could kind of see the thing moving through the woods. Uh, all I can remember is flipping the light on, and I see this creature, and I knew, I knew in my heart, I knew in my mind, in the whole night, this isn't a man. And then this thing walks across the road, takes a turn towards us, and then leaps over a guardrail. Went to look forward, and there was a big black thing, is all I can TV. Exploring the Bigfoot mystery each week with your hosts, veteran researcher, author, and TV personality, the Squatch Detective, Steve Culls, and from the Bigfoot Research Project of Kentucky, Chris Bennett. Sit back and buckle up as we bring you guests from around North America discussing the Bigfoot phenomena, but not without a few laughs, too. Here are your host, Steve and Chris. And good evening, cyberspace. Welcome to Squatch DTV for today's date, July 5th, 2020. I'm your host, your guide, the Squatch Detective Steve Coles, along with my co host, Yes, the man who had something afoot yesterday, <laughs> Mr. Chris oh, Bennett. Hey, what's Steve, going, man. <laughs> what's going on, Hop Along? Well, we have uh, been uh, uh, sweltering in this heat in Kentucky and humidity. It's it's very nice and warm. You can almost have to towel off just to go down to the mailbox and back. But, uh, yeah, we, we've had a real good 4th of July. I hope everything's been going well in New York. And they have, and I hope your 4th of July and everybody's 4th of July was a wonderful night. And, of course, we have some some shout-outs to do, as we normally do here on Squatch D. Hello, Alan. How are you, sir, over on Facebook? Alan, welcome. Frank over on YouTube. Hello, Frank. Hey, Frank. Michael, how's it going, Mike? Good evening. Jack. John, good evening. Welcome, John. Sherry, hello. Hey, Sherry. Hi, Sherry. Thank you. Not, not a <laughs> Yankee from Nottingham, England. Hello. Good to see you well, from over the pond. Welcome. And of course, hello, Mike. And those are the, the cast of characters that have wandered in early and shouted out already in, in the, uh, the chat. So, uh, you know, I, for those who don't know, I was on uh, Expedition over the past weekend. And hello to Carrie. Hi, hey, Carrie. And Me? hello to B. Over on YouTube. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and, you know, quiet. Unfortunately, really quiet. It was kind of unusual. But uh, great. Uh, remember, uh, while I was on uh, Alex, um, is, is uh, Alex uh, Petrikoff uh, from up in Maine. He was uh, out with us and uh, along with yeah. Seth Breedlove. Good, good time. Yeah. So, uh, hey, we got uh, James, a new listener. 
James. Uh, over on YouTube. Hello, welcome, James. Uh, kick your feet up, make yourself at home. We ask if you're the last one in the room just to turn the lights out before you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Pat, hello, Pat. Pat. So we, so we got the cast of characters. I'm glad to see new names every week here. Yeah. Welcome to the show. Yeah. We couldn't do the show without you guys. So, but needless to say, on the other coast, over on the West Coast, over in the uh, Sierra Nevadas, yeah. uh, the BFRO was on expedition, and they had gotten a, uh, well, they have gotten more than a couple, but they have released a couple of uh, thermal images. And, um, oh, cool. The, um, you know, the, there wasn't much predication to them, just that, hey, listen, this is what we got. Yeah. Yada, yada, you know, it was just a blurb. And I can understand that because, you know, when you have a, a team out there, you know, somebody's going to spill the beans on it. So you better get ahead of it and put it yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. So, of course, you know, the usual cavalcade, you know, well, I think it's a bear. I think it's this. I think it's that. But there is no point of reference. Well, tonight we have a point of reference to this. Oh, and, good. And, and this is the awesome thing. This is part one of a two part series. We're going to. We're going to come back next week with even some more folks uh, that were on the expedition and some more oh, material. Yeah. Hopefully, you know, we'll get some more pictures and and understand that, you know, th there's a reason why they do not believe this is a bear. Right. And uh, so here we go. So without further ado, we're going to hop right into this because uh, sorry for the late start. We, we had a little bit of uh, of uh, some um, technical difficulty. So we had a little bit of a late start, but we want to jump on and get these guys on. Yeah. So, uh, also quick hello to Aaron. Welcome, Aaron and George. Aaron. George, George over welcome. on Facebook. We got a lot of Facebookers on tonight. Yeah. So, here we go. Great. So, without further ado, we're going to bring on Matt. Hello, Matt. Matt, are you out there? <laughs> Mr. Matt Moneymaker. He's not muted, I don't think, is he? No, he's not. He's good to go. <laughs> Uh oh, <laughs> the technical difficulties. Oh, Wonderful. okay. So <laughs> Matt, Matt, Matt said he's going to connect for his laptop. So just yeah, uh, yeah, just reach out to me. He want he wants to get a better signal out out of it. Well, you know, if it uh, every time we have a, a good show, there's going to be a few gremlins. We got to work more so more worry. than a, more than a few gremlins. And hello, yeah. to, here here yeah. comes the YouTubers. Hello, Timmy boy. Hey, man. Michael and Chris. Michael. Hey, Chris. And of course, Cryptidville. Cryptidville. So I, I heard fork chops in the room, too. So, <laughs> but, so let's uh, see. He's going to connect through his laptop. So I don't know if we're going to lose him, but. Uh, <laughs> well, he'll be, he'll be on. Hey, Steven Schleifert's over there. He's sheltering. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Big, yeah. Bigfoot book man. Welcome. I, I, I don't blame you, Stephen, for sheltering. Uh, I, I've been sheltering for about three and a half months now. Yeah. <clears throat> so, Mike, I know you're listening, so just hang in on there, and we'll uh, we'll yeah. get this going. Okay, Matt did yeah. drop, so hopefully we'll – and hello to Tom Ferentz. Hello, Tom. Good to hello, see Tom. you. <laughs> Not a Yankee. Okay. Not a Yankee from over the <laughs> pond, over there in Nottingham, England. Oh, that's where they speak English. Yeah. Yes. Remember, we're the ones with the accent over here. But, uh, you know, so I, I always say this is, is that, every, you know, I, I don't like people, you know, I don't like to jump the gun sometimes not knowing. So instead of just commenting on the, these photos, I said, why not get the people that were there? Because there was more. And right. uh, there was actually a person uh, on uh, one of the chat. Um, that was was very vocal about what was what was being seen and blah blah blah, and yeah. without really getting in alluding to much detail. But you know, you can only say much on a Facebook post. You could post a long thing. You know, half the right. people are going to read it anyway. Right. So we're um, we're hoping to get her on next week. It looks like she's going to be a go for next week. Good. So for the next couple of weeks, we're going to be talking about this and some of their interactions and experiences while they were there. And, and I think it's important when uh, new stuff comes out like this, it, it, it's important to get the people that, that were actually there, right. you know, on and get it to get the information. We, right. we know we get word, uh, word, of, uh, word of mouth from the person that was there. Rod is in the house. Hello, Rod. Good to see you, sir. Rod. 
So yeah, it, it, to me, it's, it's very important to get that kind of perspective because you, you can take a look at a picture and I've always said this, a picture is only as good as the story behind it. Well, now we're going to get the story behind it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, uh, it just, uh, once we get Matt, Matt in here, we'll, we'll have him talk through Oh, There he is. We'll have him talk through it. And, um, yeah. so hello, Matt, are you there? I am. Can you hear me nice and crisply, clearly? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Well, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. I switched to the laptop, and I should have done that from the beginning. <laughs> well, it happens. Sounds great. Yeah. Okay. So, so where, do you, where do you want to start with this thing? Uh, I know it was an expedition uh, rather recently. I didn't really get into too much details in it because I knew you guys were coming on. So I'll, I'll let you take over, you know, where, where the expedition well, 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 started. let me ask a technical question about our <laughs> other guest. How is, is Mike pool? Is he going to, is he in the waiting room? Are you able to hear him? Uh, he actually just dropped off. <laughs> okay. Well, hopefully he can, he, he can figure out, I'm going to text him saying it's much better through a laptop here. Just let me do that real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, let's say Mike, um, I switched to laptop period. It's much better period. Try that period. There we go. There we go. Okay. Well, let me give you some background on sure. the BFR expeditions and especially in that area. Uh, we had what happened in the most recent expedition is, is not like, it's certainly not the end of the story and it's, it's not the beginning of the story. The story goes back probably, you know, more than 10 years at this area. Uh, the BFR is a big organization. And so we find out about locations and witnesses through a big network of people. We had heard about this location, uh, that there was activity there. Like we hear about it a lot of places. So we did an expedition there. And since then, we got action, some really good action. I actually heard them up there. Uh, we had found, uh, uh, we had found prints uh, and on subsequent expeditions, people had good visual class A's. I didn't have a class A, but other people have had since there. And the important thing is, that they played it right at this low, this area. They played it right, and they always went in. They were low key, of course, as you know, per our protocols. Why we have success in having encounters with these things is for a couple of reasons. One of which is we don't shine lights around, and we certainly don't shine spotlights around. But we don't shine. We make it like appear as though we don't have any bright lights at all, except maybe the headlights of the vehicles, which are parked at night. So we we stay in the dark and then walk around in the areas where these things walk around. And when you do that, you'll hear them if they are there. And it, more importantly, if they don't retreat, if they don't kind of bug out. And that's what they'll tend to do at locations if they if they really don't want you to know they're there. If they're if they're not trying to, you know, if, if their fear overcomes their curiosity, but their fear Fearfulness can can be a magnet if they you know feel like they really want to know what you're doing, they'll stick around and watch you. But if the fear is too much, like if you shine a spotlight around, then to them that's that that seems to be. And this is after years and years of experience with these things. You know that shining a spotlight tends to push them back and not make them not as approach as closely as they would if you're not shining a spotlight around. Right. So right, the BFRO right. people who've gone up there for years and years have done that, and they've built up a trust with these critters. And, and these particular Bigfoots, there's more than one, will come around. The upshot of it is not just like the, the couple of those first two images that we were able to send around about the expedition. Th you know, that's just like the, the quickest ones that we were able to get out. There is more visuals. And more importantly, the guys who are on this trip are now getting better scopes so they can go back and get swatches and get better footage in this area because it will be probably be active until hunting season which is at the end of august so they have a damn good opportunity to go back there and get more footage because these things seem to be holding their ground which is real important uh, uh behavior it, it makes it so that these things will you know they'll come out to the edge of the tree line maybe 50 yards maybe 100 yards but that's close enough if they stick around and what's funny about them is they obviously don't understand how thermal stuff works because they'll stand there really still. And you can tell the bird, these things are used to standing in the shadows yep. and they yep. expect to be completely invisible. But through a therm, they totally stand out. 
and yeah. you can see them. So yeah. uh, I, on another, uh, by, we're not going to be able to fit it in tonight, but one of the other uh, people who was there, aside from Mike Poole, who we have for the show tonight, she had one like about 20 feet away from her at one point. And uh, she and, and saw how big it was and then watched, then was able to see, and that was when I don't think, I can't, can't remember. We'll have to ask her like how she was observing it. But at another look time, she saw one just full body uh, and she was probably the closest to it with a therm. Uh, and uh, when they did the recreation later on, they figured this thing had to be about eight and a half feet tall. That was the male. Right. Uh, they also saw another one, which was substantially smaller, probably even six and a half feet tall. So they kept seeing them on and off over the course of a week. But we want to bring on the participants to talk about what they saw and we're doing this like because this is another thing we can put out before we have like good images to show. I mean, the rest of the images to show. Right. Hang on. Okay. Mike's uh, Mike Poole says he's trying right now. Yeah, he's having some trouble connecting his devices. He's in, but for whatever reason, his he's got to uh, check his uh, audio settings. Well, it made a world of difference to go to the laptop. I'll tell you that it was yeah. just completely. I mean, I can hear you clear as a bell, no distortion or anything. Nice. Yeah, so, for some reason the, the the phones don't pick up a signal as well as the uh, the computers do. Um, you know, it, what you said kind of resonates with me because um, I don't know if you've ever heard of, of my one sighting I had up up in the Adirondacks, and uh, it was late October, mid October. Leaves have dropped off the trees, and I ended up. Oh, looks like we're going to have success here. I said, I'm just waiting for, ah, there we are. <laughs> Mike is here. So if you want to introduce him, I'll, I'll, I'll curtail my story. So this is uh, Mike Poole. He's a participant of the most recent California expedition. And he is from the Bay area and uh, he's good friends with the organizer, uh, Robert Collier. And they've been going to this spot a lot. And he's going to be one of the guys that's going to be going back probably toward the end of the month. Is that correct, Mike? Yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm, I want to go back tomorrow, but I got I got that work thing getting in the way. Oh, that happens. <laughs> so, Mike, I, I don't know if you had heard my introduction. I kind of gave a background on what's been going on at this location, which will remain unnamed other than saying Sierra Nevadas. We're not going to yep. get more specific on that. I noticed like when we saw the comments on the Facebook page, people were saying, what lake are you talking yeah. about? And yeah. it's just like, well... For obvious reasons, we're not going to post on Facebook the link right. this stuff is happening. Right. We have a we have a real good audience here, so they understand operational security. Yeah. Um, you know, you can't you can't give away your areas with you know, because then everybody with a flashlight or a gun, you know, intrudes in that. That's happened to me once, and, right? Uh, and it caused quite a kerfuffle because for years there's been very limited activity in the area where I was getting a lot of activity for a while. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so Mike, uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Welcome to squat TV. Welcome uh, aboard. Um, so I, exactly. I don't know where we want to necessarily start with this. I guess there's a lot of questions about the pictures and obviously there's more than just those two. Okay. So we're talking about, um, I guess that's a picture on the screen there. That photo was taken on Saturday night, uh, a week ago Saturday. What was that, the 27th? Um, yeah, that's the one right there. That, that happened at about, oh, about 11 o'clock at night. And uh, we had a, I don't know, I'll go ahead and let's start. Um, we knew there was some action. We'd been there already for about four days. There's been some things going on, and, and we have other videos, not near as clear as that. Um, so we proceeded down this lake area, and it's about two miles from camp. Uh, where we go, we don't drive anywhere we walk. So we had three groups, uh, two groups of five, one group of four people. Um, and we kind of broke down, going down the trail from the trailhead at the top, down into this lake. It's about a good and three quarter down to the lake. And we broke up our groups by 15 minutes as we walked down. Um, Robert's group went first. And I went second, and uh, another fellow in a group named Randy, he was leading another group of five people, he laughed. So he stayed near the top of the trail. Robert went all the way down almost to the lake, and then I eased down with my group uh, about 15 minutes after that. And it was actually 
at night. We had a quarter moon. The moon had been setting early and earlier during the week, and as no went on, it was setting later. So we had a quarter moon. So we went down dark, no lights, and spread out. And as we're going down the hill, um, we heard movement, and one of the guys with me saw eye shine. We were about halfway down the lake, off into a creek creek bottom to our left. We were in the position with uh, Randy, the group above us, uh, to set up kind of a pinch. So we slowly moved up on where we saw the eye shine. Randy and his group came down. We did see eye shine a couple of times. Some movement we didn't get any video. We spent about 20 minutes doing that. And uh, then we get a call from Robert. He's down at the bottom of the lake. He's down there by the lake. He's probably a good oh, three quarters of a mile away from me. And he, he reported that he'd heard a knock, a good loud power knock. We kind of gave up what we were doing and, and we eased down into that area. We got down to the bottom and met Robert and uh, decided that we spread out along the trail. By that time, there's eight down there. We spread out along a trail. It's a, it's a narrow and it's to the lake, maybe a hundred yards from the lake. It's kind of going to the... I think his audio is cutting out, Steve. Yeah, Mike, your audio is cutting out there. Mike, can you hear us? <clears throat> Mike, did we lose you? I uh, freaking. I've got a frozen screen on Mike and no yeah. audio now. It sounds like his uh, okay. broadband went. Okay, well, I can continue talking. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Mike. Yeah. The images you were seeing, those were off of a. <clears throat> a thermal cam owned by a guy named Dan. Well, no, Dan didn't want me to say his full name. So okay. his name is Dan. <laughs> and uh, his thermal only shoots stills. Gotcha. So the one, ones with the cross has a thermal that only goes, there's no moving version of that. <clears throat> there is moving version of uh, what we're calling the shaky footage, uh, which Robert Collier uh, God, he was the guy who led the expedition. He is a police officer in Southern California. He's been leading the California expeditions for the past few years. Yeah. Anyway, he was using a therm uh, that it it's uh, black and white. It's shaky footage. We want to stabilize that before we show that to people. Right. And of course, you know, I I you know was showing these first few images within the first week of everybody getting back before they've collected all the videos, before they've collected all the stills and everything else for us to talk about. But right. the thing is, is, we're not showing these things to say, hey, this is, this is proof that there's a Bigfoot. No, right. what, what, we're, what we're saying is we, these guys did an expedition there. There were several people who saw these repeatedly throughout the trip. What we're saying is this is a Bigfoot. This is a Bigfoot, so you can learn from this. We're not asking people to give us their analysis of what they think it is or right. tell us whether they think that this is this satisfies their level of evidence. No, we're saying this is this is a Sasquatch. These are images of it. And these guys will be going back to this area to get better images of this one in this area because it's kind of permitting them to get this close. Right. So that's what makes it such an exciting thing and why we want to start kind of documenting uh, the conversations and the history yep. about this area, because it's all part of the context of uh, what we're seeing here. Yeah, uh, Mike's still having some trouble getting in, but do you know how far uh, they were in this in these particular pictures? I do not know. I think it may have been about fifty yards. Okay, Man, not, I, that, not that far. Yep. I think that's because I, I had asked Robert about all about this, and he's saying about fifty yards. I don't know if Mike was with these two guys, uh, like, well, it's three guys. There was one holding the camera, and then you see the two guys in front of them. There may have been a group of about five people there. But yep. what was amazing about this behavior-wise is this thing stood mostly still for a long time, just like kind of held its position as if it just figured if it didn't move that nobody, they wouldn't see it. Right. Uh, right. And, and through the third, it was coming out a, a, a pretty strong image. Here, let me see. Mike, see guys, there's a, is there a phone number I can call. Internet is jacked in the whole neighborhood, is what he said. Uh, oh, no, no. no calling lines with this, unfortunately. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, th that's the one downside is usually 
people can uh, can get on the computer, but the, the call there's no call in line, there's no phone lines for this. Okay. <laughs> well, well, he's back on. Mike, are you there? Can you hear us? Hold up your hand if you can hear us. Kinda, yeah. Oh, there, oh, there you go. There we go. God I can hear you now. <laughs> Welcome back, Mike. Okay, hey, uh, I, Mike. Matt? I told them that these are just the first few, you know, pictures, the first ones that we sent out. Uh, but and they aren't they 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 aren't the only ones. But Mike, do you know from I mean from where they shot this? You were probably down there. About how far away is this figure in these first images? About how far away was it from the cameraman? Uh, Fifty-seven yards. Fifty-seven. Okay. Wow. Exactly. I was pretty yeah. close. Uh, Fifty-seven <laughs> yards. We went out and we did the. Uh, we used the rangefinder the next day. Fifty-seven yards. Okay. Yeah. Did they try to do a recreation? Did you guys hear me? <laughs> yes, yes. We can hear you clearly. Um. Do, w did they want to try to do a recreation uh, at? Uh, Standing at the same place with somebody over there, uh, with using the same kind of camera. Yes, that's correct. They and, and so yes. they not yes, correct. That's correct. And let me uh, let me make a, a quick comment uh, on something uh, because somebody says it kind of looks like a human. Uh, well, it, you know, with the human human stand upright, so that's not a big necessarily stretch. What I'm looking at though is it would appear that the hot is dark. If I'm right. if I'm correct, it is black so hot. That, right. So that would be somebody pretty naked out there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right. right. So you see, so that's I the mean, first thing I'm noticing. <laughs> oh, that's a very important point because you can see in the with when the two guys on the sides of the frame, when you see that, you notice that their skin on their hands and on their face is dark, and yeah. on the rest of their body, it's much lighter. Right. Yeah. So what you would see if it was a human you'd see dark around the face and right. maybe around the hand, but you'd, you, you wouldn't see it dark all the way down the legs. Right. You right. wouldn't see it dark over those. So that's, that's uniform enough for, to show that it's, that's something that's not wearing clothes. Yes. Uh, and you just by comparing it to the, the other people who are in the image. And of course there's people going to say, how do you know it wasn't somebody else on your trip? Or how do you know it wasn't somebody else in the area? And so they need now, the context of knowing that this is deep in the Sierras uh, and there's only like one way in. And these guys were camped, you know, more or less along the way in. Uh, and you, you, there's, you can't like get to this area from some other route. So these are things, these are creatures that live out there. Uh, and and they, you don't have to rely. I mean, so there's, there's so much that happened there. Right. Uh, it's clear that these were that these are Sasquatches. I mean, people saw them in daylight there too. Uh, right. And uh, now they uh, they actually saw this moving upright in the. I mean, obviously, you know the the therm only takes pictures, but you can see what's going on live on the screen. So they actually saw it walking rather than than uh, you know getting on any force just to curtail the bear the bear theory on that. Um, I noticed somebody mentioned something about the lightning in like the chest there. Almost like it almost looks like Chewbacca with a bandolero. But what I perceive that is probably some brush or some some branches or some brush that's in between the yeah. image and the camera. And that's that that could very easily be the case. Yep. And, and so we'd have unfortunately with something with an image like this, if you're doing a recreation. You could find the trees that it was those two trees, one on each side of it, but you don't know, you know, you, you, you would start with assuming that it was standing slightly in back of the bigger one. Yep. yep. Uh, because it appears to be cut off by it, but it could be like 10 feet further back, or it might be 15 feet further back. You don't know, but still at that distance, when you do a recreation, if you get within the range of that tree or even 15 or 20 feet further back, it's still going to appear to be roughly the same size, you know, uh, uh, you know, you know, depending, you know, roughly the same size, whether it's right back of the tree or 15 feet further back. And, and that would still be a valid contrast with that thing uh, at whatever distance it is. In other words, if it's right behind the tree and you're seeing it's way taller 
than, right. than a person positioned there 20 feet back. It isn't because of the distance because you're, you're out kind of at that range where 15 or 20 feet ain't going to make a huge difference on the height. Yep. My, I think Mike is on. I, I just don't think he's got his video going. Mike, are you still there? Mr. Poole. Yeah, you I'm here. I hope okay. you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear can you. you. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Gotcha. Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes. Me? All right. Um, you're cutting in and out, but I, I want to add one thing. Uh, I took a video with my Cal TK, my, you know, my entry level therm. I was about 30 yards to the, uh, be the west of this position on my video match. Although it isn't clear because it's a scout TK, but I've overlaid it and I see the same Im images and I have movement because I have video, okay. which is okay. kind of cool. It's kind of cooperating that. Nice. Well, we, you know, at some point, and maybe we can get this put together for next week, because I would love to show some of that video next week, just to calm the folks that this isn't a bear. It's something, it's humanoid walking out there. Well, the important, you know, in terms of persuading people, the important thing is for the, the many people who are there, they had enough uh, encounters yep. or, you know, they, they, they they had enough of uh, an experience with these things such that they're buying more equipment and they're going back and getting, <laughs> you know, there ain't no doubt in their mind about it. Right. And yeah. uh, uh, so that, is, and so that's what we've always said. It's just like when you've got like footage that you know is real, but it isn't necessarily perhaps persuasive to everybody else. Right. The important thing about it is that should give you motivation to go back and get better footage. Yes. Yeah. And it's, you know, in a situation like this, that's what's very possible. And that's why yeah. these guys are planning to go back and yeah. get. Some. Now, we do have a few questions out there in the chat I want to get to. And uh, David Parker over there on YouTube asked, uh, were there any vocals uh, heard? That's a good question for Mike. M Mike, I can't because yeah, you, I've heard uh, we so heard much about what I'm, happened. An yeah. So, so there was not, I heard that there was, there was a lot of brush. Um, and knocks. Okay. okay, and oh dear. Yep. I think Mike, Mike definitely has a bandwidth problem. I believe that's what it is. Yeah. Um, All right, I'm back. I, I will tell you. There you go. Go ahead. Right. I have a bandwidth problem. I will tell you what, what we heard was brush movement. We had a knock, and then the best part about it is as we walked down into that area, before this happened, uh, there's a road about a mile up there from us with a cattle guard, and a vehicle went across the cattle guard. We heard the cattle guard, and as the, the cattle guard calmed down, we heard clear as day, it sounded like the samurai chatter, the Sierra Sound samurai chatter. And uh, we believe, I haven't checked it yet, the man that took these photos that you're seeing on the screen had a GoPro on, and he thinks he picked it up. Excellent. But uh, yeah. that happened all about 20 minutes before we saw this, and that's kind of what made us sit down and, and watch the area. Never heard it before in my life, but it sounded just like the, uh, you know, the sound recordings you hear. Wow. Down, the, the straight, <laughs> like that. Right. And, uh, right. It, it, it just about, it just about, we all crawled out of our skin. And that's kind of what set us up for laying down on the boat and watching. So, right. yes, we heard vocals. <laughs> oh, awesome, man. That is great. Yep. Uh, so, next question. Oh, that's John. Uh, things slipped. Yeah. Uh, have to, Dan, you know, Dan, <laughs> uh, Mike White from Facebook asked, did anyone, at any time, did anyone try to get closer to it? Or you kind of just hunkered down and watched it? Yes, I I walked up on it and. Oh. I walked up closer on it by about twenty yards, and uh, that's when it disappeared. That was after about twenty minutes. It ducked gotcha. behind the tree, and 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 we didn't see it anymore. Okay. Next question: Did anybody get any night vision footage? As far as uh, I mean, obviously, there's a question out there. Is there a video of it walking? Uh, Mike, you said you have some video of it moving and walking. Um, was there any night vision footage? You know, all the footage was thermal footage. I don't think like, was anybody carrying any like you know, third generation night vision and got anything that way, or was it all with therms? Right. No. 
Okay. All therm. Okay. That was a that was a question by Tacky. You like any night vision footage? Good deal. Yeah. Well, sometimes people lump it all together. It's like if it yeah. sees in the dark, then they call it night vision, even yeah. if it's thermal. You know, right. <laughs> it's very different. Yep. Yeah. Um, th thermal is much better. Much better. So you know, I, I think it's huge that you know, you, you know, you know, pictures only only tell a certain for that particular second, yeah. and to have Mike come on and say, "Well, you know, I I did get some video move moving, and that's right. awesome," and Mike, that was on two feet, it was moving, correct? Mike, yeah, correct. <laughs> After two feet, I'm in trouble hearing. Uh, no, I saw what we saw was movement in and out behind that tree. The tree that you see to the left, I saw it tucking in, sticking the test out, coming back in, it's out, coming back in, and then the whole body would come out, and then it would go back in. Oh man, man. his behavior that that it's used to being like thinking it's invisible if it's standing in the shadows, right, mm -hmm. and. And it probably not understanding that they can look out in that direction and they can see the it's it's heat signature because I'll tell you that distance even if they would have had night vision they right. probably would have seen it even with straight up like light amplification third generation military night vision it would have just been back too far back in the shadows such that the trees would have given a better light signature than this thing but right. when you're seeing it, looking in the world through heat then that's when it stands out better. Yeah. Yeah. He's, stand, he's standing there, Matt. He don't have no idea that these guys can see him. He thinks he's well hid. I love this. Yeah. <laughs> so Bill Brock asks, uh, did they attempt to track the creature at all? Mike, you there? Mike, do you know if they tried no. to? Okay. No, I'm there. Uh, no, that night we didn't. We, we actually moved up the road and had another encounter with a different creature gotcha. not an hour after this one, and that one we tracked. Was there <laughs> – now, now, Bill followed up with that question. If you didn't, was there any particular why, reason why you didn't track it? You... Because the ground – I mean, I know why. Because we really yeah, we thought it was uh, pretty aggressive uh, as, as far as just standing there staring at us and not, and not really moving away, just peeking in and out. And we, we kind of had, had an idea. It was, uh, well, we'd had an encounter down there two nights before, and we were at the point where let's not push it. We got pictures of it, and let's back out. Right. That's, That's yeah. why we didn't follow Makes it. Makes sense to me. Uh, uh, smart. Where is uh, uh, Did anybody feel threatened at any point by the creature, by whatever it was? Well, I can't. Um, we didn't. However... Well, we all decided we didn't want to push it. Um, you know, it was staring at us, and we figured, you know, uh, we didn't want to push something we would be on that case. So, so I guess you could say we did kind of feel threatened, but it didn't really do anything threatening other than stand there and stare at us, you know? So, right. not really. Uh, there's so many questions here. Uh, um so uh, Vance uh, from over on Facebook would like to know uh, what weather conditions were prior to the sighting. I know you said you had a kind of a crescent moon. Were there wet or dry, you know, ground conditions, et cetera, et cetera? Give him a second, Matt. Uh, we had a, uh, a quarter moon. It had We had a thunderstorm on Thursday night. Uh, so back in the trees, the, the, the dust was still moist. But uh, it was a moon, it was setting, clear sky, no wind, a beautiful night, beautiful night for squatching. Very cool. Uh, next question. Uh, did anybody get, uh, well, you already mentioned, I think Walt may have missed it, but we, what, did you gauge the height of the, the creature at all? As far as, yeah, I understand. Yeah, we figured it would be 46. I'm sorry, Mike, can you repeat that? Uh, between eight foot tall and eight foot six, somewhere in that range. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, were there any before and after photos? Yes. Okay. Awesome. 
And the last question right now, and that'll end this round of questions, is yeah, uh, did anybody look for tracks? I think Robert Collier said they looked the next day and they saw impressions like kind of leading away from there. Yes, it, and there uh, it's uh, completely full of pine needles. It's a good, probably a good five, six inches thick of pine needles. Yeah. You can see the ground was disturbed. Absolutely no way to tell where other than the ground was disturbed. That's it. Yeah, that's the frustrating thing about pine needles. You can see a d impression in the ground, but it doesn't leave any clear. Like, oh wow, that's a footprint. No. <laughs> a lot of people kind of don't understand that. Just like you have something walking through a natural forest, yeah. it's not going to be footprints unless it steps in an open piece of mud or ground, yeah. right? Or on snow or something. Yeah. But if right. it's just plain old forest, like in the Sierra pine forest. You know, you're going to see that the ground is disturbed, but that's about it. Right. Right. Yeah. If you got a pine forest, you're going to have a blanket of pine needles on the forest floor. If you've got a, a hardwood forest, you're going to have a blanket of leaves on the forest floor. So they, they really don't understand. It, 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 it's hard to find tracks in the woods. It really. You, is. you know, Chris, this would be excellent an excellent point to use a DNA sniffer, one of those DNA sniffers. We uh, knew it stood there, run the sniffer over it and see if it collects. That'd yeah. be kind, of, kind of a neat thing to do. Uh, one other, uh, a bunch of uh, other questions here. You just came plopping in. Um, our good friend, Mick over on YouTube asks, considering the width of that tree trunk to the left of the creature, it's either a small person or bloody huge. Did anyone measure the width of the tree? Yeah, it's a big tree. We're in the Sierra Nevadas. It's that, that tree's good three and a half foot in diameter. It's a big, it's a big old Douglas fir. That's wow. right. You don't, you don't know if they've been out of their way to, to, to specifically measure, like try to measure the diameter with a yardstick or anything else so they can get uh, an exact. Well, I see the thing is, I can't understand because they can go back and do it. Uh, if they didn't do it yet, because they're going to return to the area, and all that like hindsight is twenty twenty is stuff you can still go do. But I imagine if, if that's a mature Douglas fir, yeah, you're talking about three and a half feet width easily. Uh, and uh, uh, but no, that's not a juvenile. Right. Yep. Well, I I've been looking at this photo, yeah, and I, I believe I, it's time. From my point behind that tree too. The tree is closer. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. So, okay. Uh, what other? It's funny because I'm recognizing the names of half of these people asking questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would, I would like to point out a few things about about the photo that I've noticed that I like. Okay. For any anybody that's saying that this is a bear standing on its hind legs, first problem for you is Mr. Bear usually has ears, and they would be sticking straight up, pointed forward, because when he's standing up on his hind legs, he's trying to find out what's going on up there in front of him, and he's on high alert. And this, as you can see, I don't see any Mickey Mouse Club ears going on up there. In the shadows for 20 minutes. You know, bears are restless. They move around. They right. don't really feel like a mountain lion will. Yeah. You know, at least not for very long. They're they're sniffing around. They're moving around. They're sniffing the right. air. Right. I, you know, given given the eyewitness testimony of, of not just Mike, but there's going to be other people. Yeah. That, no, this thing did walk on two legs and moved around. Yeah. I, yeah. I, can, I can feel comfortable to say. Okay, we we now have a point of reference to say this is not a bear, right? And put that one to rest. So yeah, definitely. Uh, no, sh I mean, there's shoulders there. Uh, a bear wouldn't have shoulders. Yep, so I agree. That's completely blown out of the water. So whatever it is, we're not looking at a bear, folks. <laughs> I keep talking about this, the shaky footage uh, that I've seen uh, that has to be stabilized. You can at one point see the thing walk you know, step to the side and kind of go back in behind the trees. Right. And yeah. just the smoothness of it. I mean, it's it just like, it, it, people just have to, it, it, like, I understand why people would have doubts, think, oh, it's a bear, you know, because but they'll say yeah. that reflexively, 
no matter what kind of image you show them. But this is right. really an image of something with two arms and two legs and not a bear. I mean, even right. with even if this is all you have, this is much more human shaped than bear shaped. But Sasquatches are generally more human shaped than bear shaped. You know, right? right. So it, it's not that. And so, Mike, can you hear us? Are you still there? He's Mike? just, he's just yeah. got a little bit of a lag. That's all. Okay. I can hear you. Okay. So, how, Mike, how many people uh, had, you know, I, I'm asking these questions because I wasn't on this trip. So, I'm uh, one of the reasons I wanted to do a podcast with some of these discussions is to get the information out of people, have it be documented, and I can learn what happened. Uh, Mike, uh, roughly, uh, there's about 20 people on the trip, correct? Yeah, it was actually short. We had about 18. 18. Okay. Uh, and and eight people were down at the location where we saw this, and of the eight people, four of us saw it. On, on this particular night. Did you guys hear me? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay, Mike, are you, uh, you guys hear me? Yes, yeah, we yes, got you. can hear you. Can you hear us? All right. Yeah, we can we can hear you guys. Yeah, four of it. Uh there was eight people down there, four of us viewed it. Okay, good. There was eight people down there, four of you viewed it on this particular night uh, uh, with reference to this particular incident, right? Right. Okay. So if we take in all of the days of the trip there, out of the 18 people, what roughly how many of them either saw these critters or heard them? Was it most people? Um, most. I would, I would venture to say everyone, with the exception of maybe one, because that guy didn't go out. Oh, but, I did. Uh, so 17 of, of the 18 heard people. Okay. Heard, heard, us, heard stuff or saw stuff happen. We had five class A's on this trip. So, wow. yeah, wow. it was a big deal. Yeah. Okay. And so, uh, are we talking to the guy who, who didn't go out? Was that the guy who had two of them were in the daylight? So, <laughs> oh, you had a daylight sighting as well? How many were in the daylight? Yeah. Two. Two daylights. Yeah. Okay. I didn't, I wasn't part of either any of those, but we had two daylights. During, during this trip, so uh, wow. Scott Kessler over on Facebook asks, uh, "I see you're using a black hot. Did your FLIR indicate a temperature? Obviously, you didn't have the FLIR mic, but um, do you know if there was a temperature indicated on the FLIR at all that we see? I don't see one, and that's usually an option sometimes to keep the temperature or not. So, no, um, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't know what Dan's FLIR uh, did. I never, I've never used it." So I don't know. Um, unless it mine is a TK out, so it's a, it's the bottom of the barrel. It just showed a black spot. <laughs> the ones that show temperatures like at the spot in the middle, uh, I don't think any of the firms they had up there showed that temperature spot. Gotcha. Yeah, that's kind of annoying because you're trying to look at the object and the, the temperature keeps popping on the screen. Um, no, so there. No, I, I just have to remark that the, the, I'm recognizing these names. I know who Scott Kessler is. I know who Brock is. These are all guys who go out and try and get footage. So, uh, um, uh, And Matt, if you read that comment on the screen of our usual pip, Mr. Mick, he says, you recognize us, Matt, because we love you, not in the biblical sense. <laughs> well, anyway, I, I, the ones I recognize, I mean, are squatchers. Yep. So they're hopefully they're they're learning, you know, they're getting some insight and some knowledge with this. But the, a lot of the lessons they kind of already know, which is if you, uh, you know, oh, oh, and one element of it on previous expeditions, they did leave food out for these things. Right. And in, in one case, they left out apples and there was mushrooms left in the place of the, uh, of the apples. And people thought, well, how you know it wasn't people doing it? Well, this has gone on long enough that they did an interesting experiment at one point, which is they left out a, 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 a Ziploc baggie next to the apples. The Ziploc baggie had $100 bills in it. And that, <laughs> the baggie wasn't touched. 
<laughs> I mean, after months and months, the baggie wasn't touched. So that's, that's a really good. good way to rule out it being a homeless person. Yeah, I think you could rule out people. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. I have a, another question uh, the, uh, as to the uh, Class A sightings. Uh, were they were they fleeting glimpses of something distant and dark, or were they actual you know sightings where they saw it like you know I, I, viewing? I think the longest what Robert said the longest of the daylight sightings was about eight seconds. Okay, so they're pretty quick, but still. Well, it, it, you think that's pretty quick, but that's one thousand yeah. one, two yeah. thousand three, yeah. three thousand. Yeah. I mean, that's a good. I mean, yeah. when. You know, the Patterson footage is not really that long. Yeah. You, know, you, you can, I mean, the Patterson footage is, well, I, I can't remember exactly how many seconds where it's fully in frame, but it's, it's still, you can see a lot in eight seconds. You can, yeah. you can see enough for you to know that it's not a bear. Yep. <laughs> yeah. If you're seeing it in daylight. So Cryptidville asks, what was the, what was the draw that caused these Bigfoot to come in? It was simply these guys going down there from the camp yeah. to the lake. You know, the distance from the camp to the lake was like it, 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 in hundreds of yards, not miles, yeah. but, yeah. but hundreds of yards, kind of within audio range. So these guys would go down into this around this lake, and that's when they'd hear the brush movement and the knocking, etc. And then it, the squatches would follow them back to the camp. And that's when that one sighting happened with, I mean, encounter, which was like, it was only about 20 feet away from uh, a woman who was on the trip. And she got a really good look at it through a therm that just, she didn't know how to use it to record, unfortunately. Uh, but she was freaking out on the radio saying it was right there. And she was able to describe at least what the thermal image was and that it had very long arms. And she said it was just, it was a towering creature, very big. I mean, that must have been you know, eight and a half foot one. And that may have been the same one that you're seeing there. And of course, when I'm hearing about these different encounters, I'm wondering, well, was that the male or was that the female? And we know male for female, not because they were seen body parts, but because one was about eight and a half feet tall and the other was about six and a half feet tall. And right. from my past experience, when you have a pair of them somewhere and there's that big height difference, it usually means a male and a female because males yeah. are that much bigger. Yeah. Uh, and and I always say this too, is, is that, you know, when we're, when we're going around the woods, we, we walk, you know, loud and proud because it, it, it perks their curiosity and doesn't threaten them. When you start skulking around and that, that that's when they tend to get on guard a bit, but, um, but yeah, it keeps the bad animals away too. So if everybody's just making a ruckus, most of the time, those bad critters like bears and wolves and, and, and mountain cat will, will avoid you. And but these guys, you know, being a primate, they enjoy that curiosity where their television. Um, so there is another question. Is there any uh, sign of a nest or shelter? It may any sheltering or nests, possible nests. Uh, I, Mike, we, uh, no, we, we uh, think of any, uh, you know, we've seen it before there, but not much. So, no, so. Nesting. <clears throat> Did you hear that? Okay. I yes, yes, yeah, we heard that. It, there was there was no nothing special that you guys saw there, and that's what we've noticed in the past. But you know, when you've got areas with with a lot like like beds of pine needles, right? Uh, uh, then then that's what they'll sleep on. You know, they don't need to make a shelter. They just need a mattress, basically. Right. Uh, and, and they're sleeping on that, and they can they can make bedding. They can like. They can literally pull like piles of pine needles over themselves, and that'll that, that'll be like the same as a blanket. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and and once they were, you know, Mike, we, oh, we, we lost we lost Mike. Yeah, he'll he'll be back. I'm sure. Okay, uh, uh, Chad, to answer your question, it was the Sierra Nevadas. Okay, Mike is texting me saying he can only hear every other word. Uh, so that's a problem, but uh, his, um, his, uh, so, so every other word we speak nonsense. You know? <laughs> oh, well, you know. I, I'm glad, I'm glad I hopped on the laptop though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How refrigerator our dog, you, you know, but and then it'll, it'll make sense. Um, but no, right. hopefully he'll get back on. That's probably his internet stretching again a bit. Yeah. So, okay. But, 
Um, so what other questions are people sending in? Well, we, we've already answered that there were some impressions found, but nothing cashable or nothing, you know, because of the, the, the substrate on the ground. Yeah. So thank you for Carlos for that question. And thank you. Thank you for all the questions out there, folks. You guys are doing wonderful. So, um, so, uh, yeah, so I, you know, I, I think we've gotten, you know, we, we wanted you guys on for the hour tonight and I, I think we've, we've gotten what we need, uh, for tonight and we can, and Chris and I can get on to other topics. Um, all right. but, uh, I want to, I appreciate you coming on and, uh, you know, we'll talk this week, maybe get a couple other pictures up here just to, you know, uh, pique everybody's curiosity because they're definitely curious about, about this. Uh, it's one thing I noticed is when, when, when this popped, everybody was talking about it. So yeah, and they really should, because this is, it's not significant because the images are so fantastic. The images are just what they got, the little bit that they were able to carry away from a scene that was confirmed by like almost 20 people of having action uh, repeatedly and showing a place that's gotten action every summer for a long time, a place where, again, they can go back to and they can get better stuff. And that's what they plan to do. So you can bet that there's going to be more and better images coming out of this area. And I certainly look forward to that myself. Me too. <laughs> yep. Um, and, and, you know, the, the interesting thing is, is that you have uh, uh, something to study now. Uh, you can look at these and, uh, you know, obviously if there's video of it walking upright or backing up into a tree, okay, you can rule out bear. So the next thing is, is how about human? And, and that's what, obviously the, the, the thermal read on this does not seem to be human to me, but, right. um, are we talking, we'd have to be talking about a naked human. There's no other yeah, way, you yeah, know, you know <laughs> That, that's why I'd be really, really interested to see like a, a, a snippet or a picture of Mike's uh, therm that, which would be, you know, really, yeah, you know, that would, you know, here's another thermal of of this using another instrument that right. somebody else had, right? You know, you're just building your case to, hey, we, we, you know, we got signed. I know you're, not, I know Matt, you're not trying to convince anybody, but uh, you know, pe people are definitely, you know, interested. So this is a Sasquatch. And we, there's about a half dozen other images and or videos from this, maybe more. Uh, and, uh, and this is just the first one we can get out to the public, you know, upon return. One of the guys from Montana, he had to go back to Montana before he could even process the stuff on his camera. Uh, and so more will be forthcoming. And we'll be glad to share it on your show, Mr. Coles. Ah, I appreciate that so much, Matt. Appreciate and it, Matt. And uh, like I said, we'll be we'll be in touch this week. We'll uh, get set up for the show next week to have uh, Jamie come on. I'd love to hear her story. Um, and uh, hopefully the the internet connection between here and California will be a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hopefully. So. All right, Matt. Thanks for coming on tonight. Thanks, Matt. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, you know, and I will uh, pass on my thanks to Mike Poole as well. Yes, absolutely. There take care. Go. All righty. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. And we also want to thank Mike Poole. Who yes, due absolutely. Technical exactly. difficulties. You know, he's had a little problem there, but hopefully we'll get that straightened out maybe next time or, or a future show. But uh, we appreciate him coming on. And, man, I'll tell you what. Our listeners are, like, just bang, 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 just right there with the questions, right. you know? Yeah, there were guys, they make me so proud. I'm, these guys and gals are so sharp, man. Um, yeah, I, I tell you, it, you know, there are a lot of questions, and, and everybody's curiosity has peaked and wants yeah. to know more. So, uh, yeah. you know, we, we, you know, put it on a, to try to figure it out rather than just showing the pictures and comment on them and say, well, we'll have to wait and see. I figure right. let's go right to the source, which, you know, the, the cool thing is, is that that's what we try to do when possible. There's been so many times we've had pictures up here on the show uh, that we're, we're, Chris and I are talking about. And, you know, the yeah. audience is doing a great job talking about it as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, they didn't respond to the 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 the, 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 the call to action. And uh, but Matt did. Matt jumped right in and said, yeah, let me, you know, and helped out getting getting a mic on. And next week we'll have Jamie on. Hopefully we'll have some more. I, I know over the week we'll get a few more pictures, hopefully to, to show and, uh, 
you know, it, like I said, it's not a case necessarily of convincing them. Um, and well, I know there, there's people that, that talk about, you know, uh, you know, Mike, Mike just popped back on. <laughs> oh, he's gone. Um, you know, there, there's people that, that talk about confirmation bias and stuff like that. And too, yeah. you know, and, and that's why I think it's important. You know, I wasn't there and, and I, I'm certainly not, somebody that's into necessarily confirmation bias. I've debunked a bunch of things, you know, right. misidentifications, all that. And when I first heard of it, I was, well, you know, maybe, you know, I didn't really, I looked at it for a few seconds. Well, that's, that's interesting. And then, you know, I start looking at it, you know, deeper and like, yeah, that, that's right. kind of got shoulders. Yeah. Um, so it, it, no ears. It's, well, that, that, that's some of the stuff I like about it, Steve. I mean, uh, I, I like it. You know, of course, now I wasn't there. So, you know, I, I can't be a witness that, yes, this definitely was a creature, but I sure do like it. And I, I think they might, they be, I think they're on to something here right. be, because we, you know, to me now, my impression, I'm getting um, the impression of some shoulders there. I'm also not seeing any ears and I'm seeing a full uniform, uh, head to toe, uh, uh, body temperature there, according to the thermal. I really like this. Right. And unless there's a, a, a kind of a tubby streaker running through the woods, I, I just don't, <laughs> I, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of tough to, uh, you know, say it, it's, you know, something else. Um, well, yeah. I, uh, if it was me behind, behind the tree naked, my belly would be sticking out from behind the tree, you know? <laughs> um, and, and just, and just think it's the summertime. Right. It, it's the high Sierras bugs. You know. and, right, and the 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 behavior that that Mike was describing that right. this thing has been you know peeking in and out from behind that tree, I mean that has been that is behavior that has been documented and reported by uh, and several. I mean, you know, I can't you know I don't know the list of names, but several people have documented that behavior, and uh, I've witnessed that myself. <laughs> I really like it. Yep, it's 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 definitely interesting it, it's something right. something uh some of the best stuff i've seen that's come out in the last couple of years you know there hasn't been much except you know our uh, our friend to the north or uh that we uh don't particularly uh. <laughs> um, oh, no, no 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 just don't go no, there no no i'm not going there i'm not going there i'm turning <laughs> turning the page um it's coming but no 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 it, it's coming but not tonight um you know, it, it, it's kind of like this. If you look at behaviorally, it matches. Mm. Um, if you think about, um, if you think about my, my sighting, like I was talking about my sighting, mm -hmm. you know, Matt was talking about how they like standing next to trees and, and, mm -hmm. and mine was, was kind of just, uh, <laughs> uh, to me, it's, um, um, how should I say it? How should I say it? it was standing next to a utility pole? I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by comments. Um, it was standing next to a utility pole, right. and, when I, and I was just lighting up things. And when I put my light on, I froze, and it wasn't until I moved the light that it realized perhaps it saw me, and then it walked into the into the forest. It right. froze too. It stood perfectly still, even though I had my light on it. I was surprised it just didn't bolt. Yeah. But I, I think it was the same thing. Does it see me? <laughs> Do I right. see it? Exactly. The minute, the minute I made any move, then it decided just to calmly walk in. And uh, thank God I had people there because it would have just been so antidotal. But everybody was like, hey, we, we, we hear something moving around the, the backside right. of the camp. And I was like, okay, cool. And yeah. then the video of the dirt coming in, you know, falling in where it stepped in. Okay, yeah. good. Yeah. Um, so I, I have faith in, in you know, the expeditionary stuff. Uh, I, what I don't have faith is the people that are on Facebook every day saying they have umpteen encounters with the Sasquatch overnight and every night they go out and every day and we talk to Sasquatches, we feed them, we, we do whatever that really, you know, you don't always get every, you don't always get stuff when you go out on expeditions. Absolutely yeah. not. Right. Um, you know, sometimes you hit pay dirt. I hit pay dirt for, for about a year or two. When I went out, there was activity. There was, you know, there's some still shots of eye shine, FLIR photo, um, FLIR photos, I should say. Um, 
you know, there, there was audibles, there was, you know, my sighting, uh, there were in 2010, there was, uh, one of my guys had a fleeting glimpse of one yeah. and I saw the same thing, which was really, really bizarre. Uh, I don't count the fleeting glimpses as sightings for me anymore. I mean, not after the, the two ones. I don't count the the instrument ones that I had with night vision way back in 2006. Right. Uh, one in Texas, one in Alabama. I don't count those either. The ones I count are the ones with my naked little eyeballs. Right. Yeah. Um, so those are the ones I personally count right now. But uh, to have a FLIR, uh, you know, <clears throat> that's what they got to do. They got to keep hitting it, keep hitting it and stay out there. Well, and then, uh, you know, another thing about this FLIR image, you know, you got, um, the people that were there. Well, well one of them anyway, Mike, you know, uh, he's coming out. He's, he, and he's telling us, you know, Hey, you know, this is, uh, the FLIR, FLIR footage that we got of a Sasquatch. He's not saying it could possibly have been a bear. No, he's saying this was a Sasquatch. I watched it. I saw it moving around on two feet, and this is the footage we got of it. And then, uh, and then we have, you know, my, uh, Matt Moneymaker comes out as uh, 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 the head of the BFRO. You know, he's, he's like, "Hey, this is what we got," and we're not saying that this is a bear. We're saying this is a Sasquatch. <laughs> and no, no, it's it's completely, you know. I really like that, you know. That, so uh, that's, that's uh, a whole that's a whole lot different story from somebody putting out a questionable video and saying, "What do you think this is?" You know, <laughs> hmm. <laughs> sounds like click. another guy from Canada. Yeah. <laughs> click, click on this. Click on this yeah, link. Click, you on, know? click on this. <laughs> yeah, you know, at, at least this is something with with a, a backstory to it, right? And uh, you know that that's the huge difference between, oh, yeah. you know, this is not. See, there's things called clickbait, and there's things that are not clickbait. This is not clickbait. This is getting, you know, okay. Uh, you know, and I'll say this. I have a more didactic approach. I don't put anything out until it's all completely ready to go. Yeah. That's fine. But in this case, uh, you know, a couple of pictures will go out, a teaser or whatever you want to call it. A, hey, you know, we, we got something. Of course, when you have so many people, 18 people, it's bound to get out anyway. So we, we, you know, so we got, uh, I think, you know, in, in this case, if I had 18 people out, we got some bigger, Hey, you know, and the same thing here, here's a couple of pictures in the latest trip. Well, so, yeah. you know, Matt, and, and, Matt did the smart thing by coming on Squatch Detective and the Squatch DTV and getting ahead of this before it hits the mainstream. Right. And uh, putting it out here. And we sure right. do appreciate it too. Right. It, 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 you know, it, it adds, you know, this isn't just something put up there with no backstory. There is a backstory. And I started, right. I started seeing snippets of it in the Facebook post, which is where it was posted over on the BFRO Facebook group. Yeah. And, um, you know, there were, there was questions going back and forth and there, there, you know, of course, everywhere you go, there's some people that say, I don't think so. I, you know, whatever, that's fine. Uh, the whole job of the show tonight was to get that information out there. And we did. And yeah. next week, we'll we'll do another part to this. Hopefully, have some more material, and we'll get another story from another person's perspective. And I think that'll be friggin' awesome. Well, see, uh, I had I had missed before I talked to you, Steve. I had missed out on this because, you know, I do have a Facebook account. I do, but I I hardly ever right. sign into Facebook. You know, I, as far as social platforms, you know, I just don't do it. And if but if they had an anti-social platform, something where everybody signed up and then nobody signs into it again, I would be on that one. <laughs> and Stephen made a good question. Cue up the raw video, press play. I agree 1,000%. Yeah. Yeah. There's so many, I mean, the drive-by videos that you get on YouTube sometime, uh, you see these, and they're just like little 10-second snippets of something walking and, oh, it's Bigfoot, with no backstory, with right. no front-to-end it's yeah. very, it's very crucial. And there's other, there's other documentation coming. I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I'm sure they're going to write up a big report when they're done and after they're, they're all done with their research there. Um, yeah. Um, and, oh. and what, what I think truthfully is, uh, you know, some people get irritated because it was just a, you know, a, a couple of pictures out there for teasers. And I understand the frustration level with that. Cause I want to know more myself. Yeah. Yeah. So, I like, like everybody else in this audience, I wanted to know more. And that's why we did the right. show. Cause I wanted to know more. So, yeah. um, so, you know, there, there's different, you know, people do different things, uh, different ways. 
But we um, did learn. We did learn tonight. They did. They have done a height estimate of the creature between eight foot and eight foot six. Now that's interesting information. And Chris Spitzer writes, if Bigfoot is ever proved, it's going to be because of people like the BFRO or in, uh, in it. WAC, not those social media celebrities who seek money and fame. Well, you know, it, it's kind of bizarre yeah. because, you know, you're right. You know, there's a couple of, there's one new guy in Canada. You've been around for about a year and a half and he talks a good game about Bigfoot, but we never actually see him out there doing anything about Bigfoot. He's just, uh, just a talking head per se. And then once in a while on his Facebook page leaves, you know, phony evidence. You know, oh, and then just alludes that it's his. When it really it's not. I don't believe at all it's his. I think he's just stealing. You know, we've already gotten proof that he took a picture off of somebody else's site and put it up and said, oh, what do you yeah. do when you catch this on a trail cam? You know, he's just a talking head, and that's all he is. And understand his background as a hunter, that he's probably just trying to bait us. So, uh, you know, I'm not really, not really convinced. And supposedly he's writing a book. When uh, when 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 they're po when people and this goes for any of them when they start yeah. posting uh, clickbait videos, yeah. that, that's when you know uh, all the 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 question marks go up. Like, why the heck is he doing this? You know? Right. Yeah. So you know, I well, uh, you know, and and, and uh, Mike White writes, "Yep, thanks, thanks." Answered all my questions. Well, Mike, I I hope you come back for part two because I'm sure. Uh, this is going to be from another person's perspective. And, and like any kind of investigation, you want to look at different aspects of people's viewpoints. Yeah. You know, um, uh, uh, Sean, Sean writes this question. And does he have a vested uh, interest in this being a Bigfoot? I, you know... No, I, I think in actuality, you know, the same thing if, if one of my guys went out and they, they caught some stuff, I'd be pretty excited too. Not because, yeah. I mean, okay, there, there are some pictures. It's a Bigfoot. How is, how is the monetary gain for that? You know, well, yeah. you know, some people say, oh, well, uh, you know, he's going to have signups for expeditions. He's got that already. Well, yeah. You know, and for the BFRO, it's a team effort, you know? So if part of their team is doing good, you know, everybody's doing good. It's like, great. Great news, man. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. And, 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 and truthfully, you know, truthfully, you know, he doesn't know much about it himself. He, that's why he was asking questions. You know, he's in much in the dark. Just people sent him the pictures. He didn't promote this. He wasn't there. So how could this have anything really to do? And, and frankly, I look at those pictures too, and it doesn't necessarily say bear. It could, I, I mean, I, you know, I wasn't there. Um, doesn't necessarily say, say, say bear. Of course, we haven't seen the video. We haven't seen the other pictures. We just got one, you That's know, a couple right. of stills in the same spot. When we see the other ones, it'll give us more, more determination. Maybe even a, right. a video snippet. It'll give us more of that, that feel for it. More um, to look at. What we're yeah. looking at so far, I like. Well, but, but this is just, you know, uh, two pictures. See, and, and people forget. People forget. If you look at a person like... You know, the guy from Canada, uh, the one with the beard, you know, he says things are Bigfoot because he's got a film to sell. He's got the, 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 the Amazon, you know, the Bigfoot taking the apple supposedly and all this other stuff. And the, the Bigfoot that looks, oops, like it's fire. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I didn't say that quite yet. I'm not, not giving that out just yet. Just a little subtle, little subtlety there. Um, uh, but, you know, uh, that, that's an agenda. When you talk about somebody like the promoter over there on the West Coast and the, the Bay Area, you know, yeah. his, his aim is not to, to get in the news and everything's a Bigfoot because he is trying to get investment money for museums that apparently never go up. Yeah. So, um, so uh, you know, Sean says, wondering maybe it's a lead-in for another TV show. Well, then again, he didn't. He didn't produce these these pictures, and these people evidently believe what it is. Like I said, we haven't seen the video yet, but uh, you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, if you look at Zach Bagans when oh. he did his Ghost Adventures uh, documentary, very before he got the TV show, it was because of his evidence that he got the TV show. So, but I, I don't see that necessarily as as a as a motive because again, he didn't. 
he didn't uh right this is not matt moneymaker went out and made this video no no yeah. yeah. no this was somebody on expedition that did right so a big difference there yep uh, yeah, Pat Turner says the temptation to, for fraud to monetize in the Bigfoot world is great and many do it, but many don't realize that there is no money in this. There's money for people who have huge YouTube channels to come up with a lot of clickbait shows and, and to, yep. to promote, um, you know, stuff that that's not, you know, that's one thing that, that Chris and I have talked about constantly yeah. is, is we, you know, if we have a, a clickbait show, <laughs> this is a clickbait show, but we're here to bring the truth and bring the facts as they are. And what more facts can we have than bringing on like a person like Mike Poole, who is there? Yeah. <clears throat> and we'll bring on, you know, we'll bring on somebody else. And, uh, you know, uh, we'll bring on somebody else that has another point of view that was there, uh, you know, whether they agree or not, I'm pretty sure they're going to agree that, Hey, what they saw was legit. Um, yeah. well, I'm trying, to, like throw, trying to figure having, out what I just did with my computer here. <laughs> uh, well, they were also having a lot of other sightings though. You know, like right. is it 17 out of the 18 people had some sort of experience there. Right. So that, that, that's pretty interesting. Right. That, that's, <laughs> and that's that, that's that's really rather good. huge for confirmation bias. Yes. But, but let me let me caution that too. That that you know, uh, there's mass hysteria too. So you, you got to kind of weigh it. But you know, if people are seeing, yeah, I mean, obviously they're seeing something. There it is, right in front of them. So right. you know, at least that it's not mass hysteria. They're seeing something out there. Yeah. And you know, at the looks of it, uh, like I said, I can't wait to see the video. Oh. Yeah, I want to. I want to see, be, and they're gonna, you know, you know, it's shaky, but they're gonna stabilize it. That's good enough. You know, and, we'll, we'll take a look. Something else before I forget it, I wrote it down too, so I wouldn't forget to mention this yeah. after when we started talking about this. But uh, Mike it, uh, mentioned that they had he had heard samurai chatter, like on the Sierra yeah. Sounds. Interesting. Now, that is interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. Same mountain range. <laughs> hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully, you know, we'll get some of the audio too. And like, like you say, one, you know, one of the guys had their GoPro going and, you know, so the, the, the beautiful thing is, is that, you know, people talk about, you know, making buck, making bucks, right. um, off, off the, 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 but, but I look at this, you know, Pat is, um, you know, just because, you know, merch documentary subs, there's much more money to be made through fraud, but there's also much more money to be made through legitimate research, too. You know, just because somebody monetized, had a TV show or whatever, it's a fraud. Mm. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not how to hunt. <laughs> there is your, your clickbait right there. Talking about Bigfoot when you have... <laughs> No background doing it. Um, yeah, that's that's the clickbait. The massacre theory. When somebody is becoming kind of faded out, the massacre theory. Ah, uh, yeah, I, I think there's there's an idea for for some clickbait too. <clears throat> Although, let's face it, none of these guys are getting rich off it. Yeah. So I don't know. You know, I I, I know our buddy from Canada with the beard is not getting rich off it. I know that for a fact. Um, well, you know, Steve, you, you know, you, you I've been you, on, I've been on here with you for 10 years now, bud. And, yeah. uh, we've been doing like, you know, legitimate Bigfoot research and, and we bring the show, you know, when we can. And, uh, man, I'm not rich from this. Bigfoot, Bigfoot has not made me any money at all. And I, I don't think it's made you rich either. Has it? No, you know? no, no, no. I mean, I, I've written a few books, and maybe on, on a good, you know, on a good show, I'll, I'll I'll pull in, you know, some some money to pay for the trip. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pay for part of the trip. Um, Alan asks, uh, did Matt or Mike mention they recorded the chatter? Uh, Mike mentioned that he believed that one of the guys uh, actually that you see on the uh, that had the FLIR actually had his GoPro going as well, and he believes he caught that on his GoPro. So we'll hopefully find that. Oh, wow. 
Yep. Oh, so that would be that would be great. Oh my god, <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> I don't want to hear this. Yeah, oh. and, and mind you, the the folks that 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 had all these experiences. Yeah. You know, uh, the first time I'm hearing a lot of their names. You know. Right. Um, you know, this isn't like, um, oop, hang on. Uh, uh, the link ain't working on Facebook. Well, <laughs> Ron says the link ain't working on Facebook. Oh, no. It is, because how are we getting all these Facebook people watching? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, a lot of people are from Facebook. Yeah. There. Most all, everybody's on here from Facebook, look like. A lot of people. And we got our YouTubers on there too. Oh, oh, YouTubers, please if uh, if you hadn't already, please hit the like uh, and subscribe button if you don't mind. It helps us out. We appreciate your support. And uh, if you already did, thank you very much. <laughs> no, see, here's the thing. I, uh, you know, you, you talk, you know, Mick might write to even Carmine's 50 large. These book didn't pay dividends to him. Uh, I didn't put it up on Amazon until they, the only way you could buy that was if you were at one of my shows or, you know, one of the shows I was at where I was doing a presentation. Yeah. Um, and I only recently put it on Amazon because, that's the only way I could, when they did the switch over from Create Space to Kindle Direct, that's the only way I could uh, publish books is if I put it, made it available for Amazon. So, uh, yeah, unfortunately, you know, and, you know, the dividends are not, you know, uh, they're not bad percent wise, but, you know, it's not enough. I mean, I sell, if I sell, say I sell like 300 books in a year off of Amazon, uh, you know, that's a lot. <laughs> uh, and I'm not, uh, I don't think I've made four figures over any book I've written yet. Well, and uh, you're not, you're not going to retire on your own Island. No. I mean, no, or I should say, I, I probably made four figures over the span of uh, eight years of one, uh, you know, of the two books, um, that's over eight years. And, uh, but nowhere, you know, no, and I'm talking about low four figures and, uh, not enough. I, I don't think I've made more than, you know, yeah. two grand off the books off of oh, eight yeah. years. No. And, you know, Steve, and I, yep. Uh, Mick said that was a dig at uh, the other guy, not you. Oh, okay. No, 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 no. That's, 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 uh, we got it. We got that. We got it. Yeah. We, we, yeah. um, but no, I, 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 I'm a very open guy about, but you know, the, the new book is doing very well. And uh, it, it does, and, and the new book is, is a lot of fun. It's the Sasquatch Playbook, and that's available on Amazon, too, for those who uh, are interested. Yep. But um, so anyway, for those who didn't notice also, and, and just a, an opposite programming note, for everyone who didn't notice that now you can join our YouTube community page oh, um, yeah. where, where I actually get to do posts so, like, tonight, for the first time, I was able to post to YouTube what tonight's show was going to be without... All right. Without... Uh, so, that's really um, cool. Oh, and, and yeah, no, no, I, I agree. I agree 100% with you, Pat. I, there's nothing wrong with making money in the Bigfoot world. There, there's got to be some way to recoup some of the losses. I mean, over the years, thousands yeah. of dollars spent in equipment, thousands of dollars spent in travel, yeah. gas, hotel rooms. Uh, you know, I've, I've traveled for shows that I lose money on constantly, but I go because I enjoy like meeting, like when I was doing Scarefest for a while, it, that was a lot of fun connecting with people from Kentucky and the neighboring States down there and talking about their experiences. A lot of times I love going to these events to connect with people, to get sighting reports, to talk about and educating people about what I know. And perhaps educating me about what they know. And that's really, uh, really, uh, you know, uh, huge, huge. Um, so, uh, you know, it's, it's been an incredible journey. I mean, 22 years, Chris. Yeah. And you've been with me, you know. After well, you, we, you, we've known each other since 2007. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I, I only I came, I came on the radio show of uh, 2010. Well, you came on as a guest before then. Yeah, yeah, I did. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, it's been a lot and, you know, here's the thing, uh, July 24th, Chris, mm -hmm. July 24th is our one year anniversary on StreamYard. All right. Wow. Can you believe that? We've been here almost a year now in this format. It doesn't seem like it's been that long since we just, seemed like we just got this started on this one. Well, you understand that we have an episode zero because somebody can't count me. Uh, <laughs> and, was, and we have a special edition episode because uh, the reason we, and that was the, the, uh, the uh, Bigfoot cold case. We call that a special edition. So yeah. tonight is episode 35, but we've actually done 37 episodes in 52 weeks. So, yeah. um, or actually at this point, 50 weeks. So, yeah. So we, we've taken a few weeks off, of course, you know, yeah. that happened. Yeah, we, we need a break. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and Ken Collins was the first guest this year. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Ken. Yeah. And, 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 you know, I agree, you know, Mick, I agree with you a thousand percent about, uh, <laughs> yeah, Sean, you're right. Sean says you want to make money on it. Drag one into the center of town. <laughs> uh, you know, a lot of people ask, and, and this is a good question. Um, you're in the you're, you're out on expedition, you're out investigating, and you find one dead in the woods. You find that one dead in the woods. You don't kill one, you find that one dead in the woods. Right. What would you do, Chris? What was the first oh, okay? Let's let's get around about getting the thing out of the woods. Uh but what well, was the first thing you'd be doing? I would, uh, that would, uh, well, first thing, if I had my cell phone with me, I'd call you. But now, <laughs> but now the, the thing that I would do before I left the woods, and I know this is, this is probably horrible, but I do have this plan and I'm sorry. It well, well no, how about uh, instead of while you're in the woods, okay, say you, you got it loaded or whatever. Now, what do you do? So when you're leaving the woods, what's the first thing you do? Well, I guess I have to go find some place to keep the body cool. <laughs> That's the first thing, but uh, that would be the, to contact the. Uh, uh, well, again, contact you, and you're the PR guy, Steve. So, yeah. but the first thing you'd have to do is have a, a press conference and a release. You know, nope. uh, get all the. Oh, you're talking about scientific research and stuff. Nope, first? nope, nope. The first thing I would do. Hmm. The first thing I would do, and and guy gang in the chat, oh, please. Oh, 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 oh! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Back up. Okay. I do have a plan. I do have a plan. What's that? But now, mine was to send tissue samples to multiple researchers around the United States. That's the first thing. That, that That's the deal. Multiple tissue samples to, or excuse me, tissue samples to multiple researchers around the United States. Yep. That's number one. Tommy, up. Oh. Tommy okay. says, take pictures, take a piece of it, finger twos. <laughs> Steve Cawthorn keeps wanting me to go to a, a, the uh, cow, point, the, uh, cow pie tossing contest. <laughs> <laughs> Correct. Don't call the authorities. Here's what I, I would do. And, and this is first thing I do is while I'm in the woods, yeah. I'm going to take one hand, one foot, and that's what I'm going to take for now. Yeah. Um, I'm also going to take ample hair samples. Then yeah. we're going to move it. We're going to get it out of the woods. First place yeah. I'm going is I'm going to drive that sucker right to the nearest news outlet. Yeah. I'm going to drive it to the nearest TV station, send somebody in or have somebody guard it, you know, that's on my team. And I'm going to go walking in that station. I said, you need to get somebody here right now. Document yeah. this. Because now, no matter what the authorities do, they can't say it didn't happen because now I have actual... Right. The, the media there, boom. Well, see, never mind about a press conference because that press conference will get a lot of scrutiny beforehand, and then you gotta, you have to set up, you have to set press releases, and people got to pay right. attention. No, I'm gonna go right to the media. And go here, take a look at this. I have done decided, Steve, that if I come across a dead one in the woods, and I'm by myself. Howdy, Robert. Good to see you here tonight. Welcome, Robert. The what I will take off the body that is coming with me 
or I'm not coming out of the woods is I'm bringing the head. And I know that's creepy and it's gross, but I'm bringing the head out. Because if you think yeah. about it, if you bring a hand out, okay, what are they going to do? They're going to say, ah, oh, could be a gorilla. Yep. Yep. See, and, and, uh, and Pat, bring- Pat, Pat actually agrees. Yep. First news station that's around the world, cats out of the bed. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. The head, yes. Then after I get it done with the, you know, if you have trouble getting it out of the woods, I'll take a hand to foot, enough hair samples, and the head. Yeah. Get that out. The head is important because you can learn so much from the brain structure. Right. And mind you, this is a dead one. This is one we've yeah. come across. Yeah. Not, right. right. I am not, not promoting killing one. Right. So, oh, here goes the neighborhood. Ron Bowles is in the house. <laughs> hey, you missed everybody, Ron. They're all gone now. <laughs> um, uh, you can't just, you know, restart. when the show quits streaming, just click on it, play it. So, Crypto says, I thought about this often, but it's not something I want to share. Yeah, I, I can understand that. People have their own plans, but my plans are well, always very public. That's the deal. That's the deal. Yeah. Yeah. I, I figured out, and I have it on a, a pretty good authority that. If you're by yourself and it's like an adult male, uh, you find a dead body of an adult male Sasquatch in the woods, you're not ta- you're not going to throw it on your back and pa- carry it out. Yep. Because uh, these things are like really heavy. They and, smell uh, bad and they may be decomposing. Right. And, you know, then you have to deal with, you know, when creatures die, they bloat for a while. As they, they release the bloating, the bloating stops and as they come back down, then that's right. when the body secretions start. The yeah. bladder empties, the colon empties, and you got yourself a real nasty, nasty. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. It's best to, while you're there and you're there for sure, don't leave it and try to go back because it may not be there when you get back. Yeah. Video, video, document, 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 video, pictures. Um, and remove a body part. Yeah. Gross, gross, but believe me, science will Hair samples, you. hair right. samples. Hand, hand a foot ahead. Well, see, that was another reason why, Steve, that I wanted to send out uh, tissue samples to every researcher that I know all across the United States in case we have a situation where, you know, okay, everybody put your tin foil hat on here. But if uh, we have Big Brother or the men in black comes in and says, no, you don't have a dead Bigfoot body, you know, and they take it away, well, you, you can get those samples out all over the U.S. Or all yeah. over the world, even, and somebody's going to have a, set, a, a tissue sample somewhere that they can't get their fingers on. Well, yeah, yeah, you know, and that that would also be the 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 hand, the foot, all that would be, you know, right, tucked away with enough DNA sampling to go to people like you know Dr. Meldrum, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Kurt uh, Kurt Nelson up in. Um, yeah. Up in Michigan, uh, you know, a few, a few we get, you know, um, and free, <laughs> you know, it would be free. You know, it's not like I, I'm not looking to make the money out of, out of, out of that. You know, what'll happen is, is that'll come naturally by people wanting the, the story, you know, and, you know, like media outlets, they'll want the entire story. So, right. You know, You're not. I don't think you're going to be like a multimillionaire because of the Bigfoot body, because what are you going to do? You're going to auction it on eBay. No. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't, you should be. Give it to, you give it to science, man. Yeah. And you say, look, all the universities, especially, you know, Dr. Meldrum's, uh, what is it? Is that Idaho state? Idaho state. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Idaho state. Dr. Meldrum, Dr. Meldrum's uh, uh, university should have the body on, on file there. That yeah. that's, that's what you say, yeah. Somebody um, that, that's been in the game with us, you know, needs to be needs to be uh, to receive a little uh, gratification out of right. it. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, to me, a couple of things uh, be uh, twofold out of the whole thing. Number one would be the answer as to all the, you know a lot of the questions. Yeah. You know, because through DNA, they can find a bunch of things through the brain size and examination of the brain. They can, the hand, the foot structure. That's why I want a foot, the oh, hand, yeah. you know, what are the hands used for? Do they dig a lot? You know, they can uh, examine the nail beds. The you have the, of the eyes. Oh yeah. my God. So yeah. much. There's so much they can learn from the head. Yeah. Um, but that's just one part. The other part would be the vindication Yes. Of all these witnesses, people for that, thousands, right? Uh, you know, I've been told I'm crazy for years because I saw Bigfoot when I was, 
12, 15, 17, 18, 30, 40, you know, 56, even 60 or 70. Yeah. Um, you know, um, well, see, that's something that I got over though years ago. I don't really need to feel uh, vindicated, uh, but uh, there are a lot of people out there, especially when you first see one, you're like, oh my God, I got to prove it to the world. I got to prove it to the world. But I'm, after a while, that kind of wears off, and I'm not interested. It, it, it wears off when you're not in battle sometimes with a, yeah. a skeptic with a PhD that is giving yeah. opinion rather than fact. Right. And we, you know, I've talked about that on the show before about you know, yeah. what, so you know, a lot of times you'll watch a documentary and love a talking head. And, well, I don't believe a Sasquatch can. Well, yeah. And then, oh yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I have my PhD in uh, zoology and. There's no way that a, a large uh, animal could exist in the the northwestern United States. You know? So Pat Pat uh, asked a Pat Turner, Pat Turner asked a question. But what to do with conclusive footage? PG film times a thousand. Uh, absolutely nothing. And <laughs> because yeah, we, really, you know, what's yeah. gonna what's gonna happen is if you you take a film, no matter how damn good it is, people are gonna yeah. call it a hoax. People right. are gonna uh, be, people are gonna call it what they want to. You take a picture like out, and, and this is a good way to sum up as we're winding down the show. Yeah. Um, but, you know, people will take, you know, these pictures that came out, um, you know, and, and thanks to Matt and Mike for coming on. Without some of that discerning, without some of that that perspective from somebody that was actually there and having a person yeah. next week coming on and and um, the same thing, um, having having somebody, uh, in, you know, with a perspective of what, what they saw, what they experienced. I mean, oh. uh, the fact that there's other film of this out there, that there's yeah. a video that there's, you know, cause people, it would be a matter of time before somebody said this was a hoax and yeah. people, I, I, Hey, listen, I'm a hoax buster. Everybody knows that I've been doing that for years. I was the first one in 2005 before anybody else. I started calling out hoaxes on a big, huge scale when I when I called out the Sonoma hoax, aka the Penn and yeah. Teller hoax. Yeah, that was what I got myself into. Then then I followed up with a misidentification that was proven. Listen, I am the first one to call. Pardon the French. I'm the first one to call bullshit. But there are people that automatically draw the bullshit card, no matter what evidence they see or who comes up with the evidence. Because if somebody comes up with the evidence. Oh, this is this is good. But if somebody else comes up with the evidence, or because they belong to a particular organization, oh, it's bullshit. And 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 that's you know that's that's your own confirmation bias right there. Yeah. So you got to understand that you need to look at these things, open mind, but reality. Two things: when I'm seeing here is no ears. When I'm seeing here is shoulders. When I'm seeing here is a uniform color. So human, eh, not likely. Bear, eh, not likely. But we always have to keep some things open. We have to keep right. until we see the actual product, the actual video. Until we see, we have to keep an open mind to both answers. That's what I'm saying. Right. Yeah. And there's there's no need to get, you know, you don't have to get into arguments with the people that are, are skeptical of your opinion. That's fine. Yeah. Everybody's allowed their own opinion to it. Absolutely. You know? People, people no want to say it's a Bigfoot, good for them. People want to say yeah. it's not. Good for them too. Yeah. Have an opinion, but keep it civil. And, yeah, and that's, that's right. what, it, what it's about. There's no, there's no need to call people names. Right. And, you know, then again, there's right. no need for people to call you names just because yeah. you know it's yeah. not your fault that you're speaking uh, on of an experience that you have had that they have right. not had the experience. You know, and so how can they comment on what you've seen? Right. Uh, I I always look at it. Uh, I've been on both sides of the coin. Been on both sides of the coin, so I, I I know what what it's like, and uh, but one thing that you always get from me is my my real opinion, my truth, you know, and I will find you the facts and the truth as best as I always can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I can't guarantee that it'll show up on the screen here. It may show up in chat. <laughs> so. Oh man. So, but, but what a heck of a show tonight was we are, sorry, we got off to a little bit of a late start. As you can see, the guys were having some, some difficulty with their internet issues. Yeah. Um, you know, for whatever reason, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know, uh, you know, sometimes internet, even myself, and I, I don't even think I told you, but 
at eight o'clock tonight, I had a complete internet failure. I was on the phone with the, with, with the company and they got it fixed. They had to send a signal to the router to get everything kind of uh, refreshed and fixed and everything is working like a charm, not wood. Yeah. Um, so, but, uh, but uh, I want to thank everybody for being here tonight. It, it's been a, uh, it's been, you know, I am, it's my honor to try to give you <laughs> some entertainment for a couple of hours a night and uh, once a week and sometimes more. Um, I know people have been asking about where's the other videos like Squatch Stories and stuff like that. I, I'm going to do Squatch Stories once a month. I can't do it on a weekly basis. I don't want to run out of stories. And I like telling the stories with, with firsthand, you know, where I have a lot of knowledge. And then, then eventually we'll have to go to other stuff. But, um, you know, I, I like telling Squatch Stories. I like, you know, talking about the people I've talked to that have had these experiences without giving them away. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, we will keep the uh, YouTube channel. Thank you to all 1,300 and some odd subscribers we have now. So we are right. now... In yeah, you know, like I said, that uh, the whole my whole thing was getting into that community where I can post the show so people know on YouTube, yeah. you know, hey, what's coming tonight? What's coming tonight? What's coming tonight? So, so next week we already know what's coming up for July twelfth, twenty twenty. It's BFRO Thermal Images Part Two of Two, and I'm keeping myself uh, happily wow. waiting to see the new stuff, uh, yeah. to uh, see what you know. Uh, <laughs> Mixers, yeah, we gotta we gotta do a group a group hug some a group hug hug sometime. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Matt will probably be on again because he'll probably want to talk to, and this is his way of, you know, also getting some information yeah. from his folks too. He even said that this is a great idea because, uh, you know, now I can I I can ask some questions of, of the witnesses uh, or the people there because like like I said there's 18 people there he not calling everybody individual what happened but this is his uh, chance of of getting some of that information yeah. too so in and you notice he's not he, he doesn't bullshit if he doesn't know something he, I don't know I wasn't there um and, and the same thing with Mike Poole tonight uh, you know he if he didn't know a question he'd say I I don't know the answer to that yeah so um you know I, I appreciate that stuff um, so, uh, happy birthday to Ken Collins will be uh, July 10th is his birthday. Oh, so, well. uh, oh, <laughs> uh, no. Whoops. Red Sox. <laughs> uh, oh, happy upcoming birthday, Ken. Well, I'm, I'm actually wearing my, I'm not wearing my Yankee hat, but I'm wearing my squat stick to that today. And yes, folks, uh, I was out on an expedition last weekend. <laughs> And, uh, you know, we'll have a couple of weeks. We'll have, you know, there's some video that was taken by a couple of guys, uh, not of a Bigfoot. I'll make that very clear. It was, it was dead. It was eerily dead. It was uh, dead. The Bigfoot it, was dead. No, no, no. Don't start that rumor, Bennett. <laughs> what was this? <laughs> no, actually it was so quiet out in the woods. Ah. Uh, and you could hear a pin drop. I mean, there was nothing moving for the longest time, and it was really eerily, eerily quiet. So, well, that you know, the, that sounds like about the time that something's about to happen when it gets quiet like that. It did, but you know, the problem is when you shoot with the film crew, which the film crew was there, yeah, yeah, and Mister Seth Breedlove, you were, know, sometimes there's lights going on, and you know, I can't necessarily yell for for uh, you know light discipline because. They're not my group, and they need to move, and you know they they need to look at their equipment and stuff like that. They gotta have I'm out there, yeah. like like the BFRO did here this past you know last weekend in the Sierra Nevadas. They use light discipline generally. When I'm out, I use light discipline. Yeah, it's red light or no light generally. Um, right. very limited, limited. You know, if there is white light, it's aiming down, not aiming out. So. Um, yeah. low rider says it's not a party till somebody cracks open a ice cold peach snapple. <laughs> yes, well, we may have to show that commercial in a couple of weeks again. Everybody <laughs> loves it. Um, oh. but uh, but uh, God, I, you know, it's been so fun to do this show tonight, and uh, I've been working on it all day. You know, phone call, I work a little bit in the morning, and then. You know, my thanks to Matt Moneymaker for for making making things possible for actually getting some yeah. folks on from the from the trip on, 
and uh, answering a lot of the questions for our listeners. Right. And, uh, you know, you know, and I know there's people that are here that don't like them, hate them, whatever. Um, my job is to get that information to you from the source. And, uh, you know, that's what I did. And, uh, you know, I'm the kind of guy, and Chris knows that, that if you're not a hoaxer, I try to get along with you the best I can. Yep. And that, that's me. Um, I don't pull punches. I, so, but anyhow, folks, uh, Chris, your usual. Weekly. Oh, well, yeah, just again, uh, well, first I, I want to uh, thank Mike Poole and Matt Moneymaker once again for coming on. I, re- I appreciate them coming on and, and can't wait till next show. <laughs> yep. And again, uh, if anybody's watching us on YouTube, please hit the like and subscribe button, ring the bell. Uh, it helps us out and gives us more features like we got some more this week. <laughs> Thank you so much and uh, appreciate uh, everybody that joined us tonight. Uh, you guys take care. Absolutely. And on behalf of me and everybody else here, we want to add Squatch DTV. We want to wish everybody a safe and uh, great week. Keep healthy. Of course, God bless and keep on squatching. We'll catch you all here next week, folks. Folks, you've been watching Squatch DTV. Join us each week, Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern, for the latest on the Bigfoot mystery. As always, we thank you for being our loyal viewers and encourage all to subscribe to our YouTube page at youtube.com slash Steve Culls. As always, have a great week. Stay safe. God bless. And keep on squatching.